Bless our greetings and welcome back to our session Walk with Jesus from Eternity to Eternity. Shall have all on our hands before we enter into a devotion. Gracious Father, we come to your awesome presence. We thank you and praise you once again for this wonderful day. A blessed gift from your heavenly sources, Lord, that you've added, good Father, one more day in our lives. Give us, Master Lord, an opportunity to experience your grace and mercy and to give you glory, honor, and praise to God. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to be counted among the living and to glory for your name. God be with us as we are going to meditate upon your word. Let your word be Lord speaking to us tonight once again. Let the power of the Holy Spirit with the mighty anointing be upon us. You know every need of the every person, Lord, that is listening to your word tonight. We pray for your mighty healing touch, mighty hand, and mighty deliverance to be there. And also, Lord, your wisdom to be granted to us with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speak to us, bless us, be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. A quick recap where we were yesterday. We were there with Jesus moving towards Capernaum. We move towards Mark chapter 1, verse 21. We read the scripture and then we move ahead. The man with an unclean spirit encountering Jesus Christ in the synagogue. They went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding regions of Galilee. Now this is where we have seen Jesus exercising his authority over the demons for the first time. No one has ever done this. The scribes were teaching the scriptures. Scribes were using the mighty word of God. But they have never ever used the mighty authority that God has given. Word of God is full of power and authority. It's the living word of God. The scripture that you read has life in it. The scriptures that you read has power in it. The scriptures that you read and meditate upon has authority. The scriptures you meditate and you every day read and you memorize and you speak to others. It has such a mighty wonderful power that can shake the pillars, shake the foundations of the heavens. Now we have to use the authority Exercise the authority that the Lord has given us through his blessed word. Scribes were teaching and preaching, but they had never exercised the authority. When they had seen Jesus using the authority, how powerfully and how mightily he is speaking. And when he was speaking, there was a, a demon possessed person, a man with unclean spirit. When Jesus was speaking to that person and to the addressing the crowd, Demons began to tremble and they began to speak out, saying, I know who you are. Have you come here to destroy us? You are the Holy One of God. They were afraid, they were scared because they thought Jesus had come to destroy them. As I was speaking yesterday, Jesus had not come here either to condemn the people or even to destroy the demons. Jesus' mission is entirely different. His work is purely different. He had not come here to destroy anything, but he had come here to make or to bring life towards the thing that is going towards destruction. Anything that is about to die, any person is about to die who is sick or diseased or possessed or is tormented, Jesus had come down to set them free and give them health and give them strength and give them peace, joy and life. This is the reason Jesus had come here. He had come down to proclaim the good news 
and to set people free, give them the hope of living and also take them back to heaven to his father's house. This is the pure purpose of Jesus Christ. He came here to live and also to die on the cross. He came so that we may live. He died so that we may live. He came so that he can love us and he can be with us. His name is Emmanuel. He is God with us. So the beautiful way and the working style of Jesus Christ, we see he is the savior of mankind. He is moved with compassion. He is moved with God's mighty power. And he has come down to give life and authority and power to the people. He had not come down to condemn anyone. Neither did he come down to destroy anyone. So let's move ahead. Jesus moving with love, moving with compassion, moving with God's grace and mercy. He is meeting people. He is healing people. He is setting them free. He is speaking to them. He is giving them hope. People began to see light. People began to see hope. People began to see life. And people began to see the kingdom of God. When Jesus was proclaiming, when John, when John the Baptist himself was proclaiming, people could see the kingdom of God. When John was speaking, come repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. People had seen the kingdom of God and they had repented and they got baptized and they're waiting to enter the kingdom of God. When Jesus is proclaiming the same good news, he is also saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. People could see the kingdom of God. People had not simply seen Jesus Christ. People had not simply seen his miraculous power. People had not simply seen his wondrous works, but people had seen the kingdom of God too. And that's why they believed in Jesus and they followed Jesus. Many of his people left everything. We see the count of 12 people left everything, their houses, their professions, every ambition they have. And they left everything and followed Jesus Christ. So we see in another group, 70 other people left everything and followed Jesus because they had seen life in him and they had seen the kingdom of God. When they had seen Jesus, they had seen the power and authority. Jesus said, when people ask them, show us the father. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father also. If you have seen me, if you have known me, you have seen my father and known my father too. So people began to see hope and people began to see life. People began to see the kingdom of God. So that's why multitude of people started to follow Jesus Christ. Wherever he went, groups of people, scores of people followed him. And that's where we see many people brought the sick and the disease and the lame filled with so many kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Many people were possessed with their demons and they were brought to Jesus and Jesus healed them in big numbers. After this incident, his fame began to spread throughout the region of Galilee. Now we move towards verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. They entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Now we'll see one beautiful secret here and then we'll move ahead. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Now as soon as they left the synagogue, they left the synagogue. Synagogue meeting takes place on Sabbath and Sabbath is on Saturday. The Jewish people, Old Testament custom demands, Sabbath should be followed holy and no one should work. And based on the scripture, people have come with so many definitions and derivations. They don't even walk, they don't even work. There is a limit for walking, there is a limit for working. Everything has set a limit. There is a limit set for everything on the Sabbath day. And on the Sabbath day, some people, it's also called a Sabbath journey. Sabbath day journey. 
people don't work. So Jesus soon after leaving the synagogue and he worked a miracle on Saturday that too in the synagogue setting a demon possessed person free and then they moved from there to Simon and Andrew's house. Simon and Andrew's house along with James and John. Jesus, Simon, Andrew, James and John. They moved to Simon and Andrew's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand. When, she, when he came to their house, he took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve. That evening at sunset, that evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick, possessed and with demons. They have waited throughout the day. <clears throat> they have waited throughout the day so that it should be sunset. Why they have waited till the sunset? There are so many people sick. There are so many people possessed. There are so many people who are filled with so many diseases. But they have waited till the evening. They haven't brought him immediately to Jesus Christ. They haven't brought immediately. They waited till the evening because they wanted the Sabbath to pass by. It should be over. So till evening they waited. And when they found that Sabbath is going to finish and another day Sunday is going to come. Now they can walk. Now they can take the lifts. They can carry can they, so they can carry the weights. They can carry the people. There are people who cannot walk. There are people who cannot move. There are people who are bedridden. So they are carrying out the people on the separate day. They are not supposed to do this. If they do this, the law and the people of the temple, the authorities, the priests and everyone, they punish them. And the punishment, people are scared about the punishment. And also people are scared about breaking the law. They fear God. They might they feel they might be punished by God also. They must be punished by the people, the priests also, the temple also. And they waited for the Sabbath to over. And at evening, at the sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. They had to wait there. Any person who is sick even today, today, we don't wait for someone, we don't wait for something. Immediately we take the people, we carry them to the hospital, we call the ambulance, immediately we take the action. We don't wait for the day to be over. We don't wait for the hour to be over, but immediately we call the ambulance and we carry them. Because the sick who is about to die, the person who is about to, who is on the deathbed, the person cannot wait. So we immediately, we are concerned about the person's health and we immediately carry them. But during the Old Testament times, we see when Jesus entered into this world, in those days, people were people were restricted not to walk, not to make a journey, not to do anything. If even a person is about to die, they were left to lay on their beds, but not were attended by anyone. So this was a cruel kind of mindset and Jesus came here to break them. Jesus, we see many instances, he heals people on the Sabbath day and that brings anger to the people, the Jewish people, the priests and that anger kindled in them so powerfully, so greatly, they decided to kill Jesus Christ. What was the reason? They found that they were, he, he came to, he came to, he came to dishonor, he came to dishonor the Sabbath day. Jesus never dishonored. He was obedient to the word of God. He was obedient to the law. Whatever he did, he did in the terms of the law, under the guidance of the law, under the restrictions of the law. He says, man is made for Sabbath, but Sabbath is not made for man. Sabbath is made for man, but not is man is made for, sorry. Sabbath is made for man, but not man made for Sabbath. So don't give such importance to Sabbath. Sabbath is good. Sabbath should be observed holy. It should, it should be a day of rest. It's fine. But you cannot make the day bigger than life. Man cannot make be a day bigger than man. You cannot make the day bigger than the word of God. So you need to understand this. And people were left mercilessly. Some people were troubling. Some people were tormented there. And they were left. So people waited till the sunset. 
at the evening they brought to him all those who were sick and possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door around Simon and Andrew's house they have waited throughout the day and when the people came he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him when Jesus was healing the people when Jesus was setting them free the demons were about to speak and Jesus commanded even we have seen in the previous instance too Jesus had commanded the demons to stay quiet to keep quiet he did not allow the demons to talk about him demons are the fallen angels demons are the fallen angels so we just quickly move towards Ephesians chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 onwards so finally be strong in the Lord in the strength of his power put the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wines of the devil for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers of the present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. therefore take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness and shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace with all of these take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication to that and keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. In verse 13 we again say, therefore take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day on that evil day any day the devil tries to attack you you must be you must be totally covered with the armor of god the whole armor of god and having done so and having done everything stand to stand firm stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around you stand therefore you must be standing firm in the armor of god in the word of god take all the protection all the shields all the equipment that God has given to you, every protective, every protective guard that God has supplied for you and every defense that God has given to you and every authority God has given to you, every weapon that God has given to you, every power that God has given to you. Take up the whole armor of God and stand firm because our fight is not against the rulers, against the authorities or against, our fight is against the cosmic powers of this present darkness and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We are not fighting against the flesh. We are not against fighting against the enemies of blood. We are not fighting against the rulers. We are not fighting against the authorities, but we are fighting against the powers of this darkness. We are fighting against the powers of the present darkness, against the cosmic powers that are in the heavenly places, evil powers. So when Jesus speaking, Jesus began to speak and he began to he began to proclaim and also he began to set the people who are possessed with demons, set them free. Then they began to speak and Jesus said, keep quiet. I don't require your proclamation. Keep quiet. I don't want you to proclaim about me. Keep quiet. I don't want you to tell about me to the people. Let the people know by themselves. They will come to know. I don't need your help. I don't require your help. You just keep quiet. I don't allow you to speak. They were quiet. They were quiet. They were quiet. And when they were leaving out, they convulsing and crying out with the Lord voice. They left everyone. And we see many people, many people coming to Jesus Christ. They waited for the sunset until the evening. They waited for the sunset. And when the sunset had come, when the people began to come to Jesus, they began to be set free. 
all those people who are listening to the word of God tonight. I do not know who and what kind of trouble you have, what kind of problem you are facing, but in the spirit, I pray for you. I perceive pers that the need of the hour, the need of the hour is right now, at the moment now. And you have to receive the power, you have to receive the anointing, you have to receive the deliverance tonight. You need to be set free. You are bound with so many chains, you are bound with so many things, you are bound. You cannot speak to anyone, you cannot let anyone know about the things, the demons, the kind of spirits that are oppressing you, that are tormenting you, that are troubling you and the bound you in the chains. I set them free in the name of Jesus. I cast them out in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every disease, I command you right now in the name of Jesus to leave every person that is listening to this word. I set them free in the mighty and the holy power of Jesus Christ. Right now, you need to set them free and leave. Father in heaven, come to your awesome presence, O Lord. We pray for all the people who are listening to this word. We pray for each and every one. God, whatever the need they have, what a requirement they have, what a trouble they're passing through, any kind of supplications that they bring to you, Master. Lord, they want to be set free. They want to be healed. They want to be cured. We pray in the name of Jesus right now. Let your healing touch be upon them. Let the mighty authority of the Lord be upon them right now. Set them totally free and grant them, O God, Father, good health and good strength. We pray, God, Father, Lord, let your divine grace and your compassion move, Lord, right now, God, Father. Touch every person, heal every person, cure every person, free every person from every bondage. Lord, give them the joy of life, Master. And even so that, Lord, they shall see your mighty power and your mighty grace, Lord. And enjoy the life, Lord, that you gifted them. Thank you, Master, for being with us tonight and answering to our prayers also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for being here tonight. May God be with you and bless you. We'll meet tomorrow evening, same time, walk with Jesus from eternity to eternity. Stay tuned. God be with you. God bless you. Good night.